In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at adding a basic mask that doesn't have any movement within the color page of Resolve. So what I'd like to do here is for this clip that I have, I have a floating window, this VST instrument, and then our application, the DAW in the background. I'd like to just show the VST instrument. So I'll create a mask for this instrument and create my own background uh, to put behind our mask. And also we're going to take a look at how we can blur out certain areas of our clips, as well as some of the settings and options for our mask within the color page. So let's just go ahead and get started and we'll go ahead and switch to the color page by clicking below. And we don't need to see our clips, so we'll hide that by clicking on this top left button up above. And we'll also hide our timeline by clicking here in the top right hand corner. And now we're just working with our viewer and our node editor here. And the first thing I'm going to do while this node is selected is press Alt and S is in Sam to add a new, oh, new node rather so that our edits are just going to be on the second node and our original is going to be left unaffected. So we'll select this, be sure that we have this red frame around the node. And then in the bottom, we want to come to our power window panel. So this circle here, click once on that. And then what I'm going to do is select the curve tool. Now we can use linear, circle, polygon, curve, gradient, uh, but I'm going to choose the curve and we'll take a look at some of these other tools in just a moment. But now we can see that that is active. I'm going to come to our viewer and I'm just going to roughly come to the corners of this VST instrument and add points. So on the top left, I'll click once to add a point there. Let's click once to add a point here and a point here here. And then to close this mask, I'm just going to click on the original point. Okay. And now we have our mask that's been created. Now, nothing has changed for our viewer and for our clip because we do need to add a alpha output within our node editor here. So, but before we do that, let's go ahead and just be sure that this is lined up how we'd like it. And for that, what we can do, if I were to press P as in Paul, and we're not going to see this because the alpha node hasn't been added, but let's use the mouse wheel to zoom in a bit. I'm going to click and hold with the mouse wheel to get this to the corner I'd like to start working with. And let's really zoom in on here and then we'll hover on that point, click hold, and just get this really precise here. Let's zoom out, click and hold with the mouse wheel come down to our bottom point. We'll zoom in with the mouse wheel. So this point is way off here. So we'll just get that really precise. Click and hold with the mouse wheel to move over to our bottom left point. Click and hold. Get that adjusted. We'll zoom out. Let's come up to our final point. Zoom in. This one looks pretty good. Okay, so now we've got that cleaned up pretty well. You can spend as much time as you'd like with that, but just for the tutorial, I just want to keep it short. I'm going to press Z to fit this to zoom. And now we will come over to our node editor. Let's right click. And if you notice here, we ha just have the green circle here. Uh, when we right click and choose to add alpha put, output, we now have this blue circle and we can click from this node that we've created our edit and click hold on that blue square and connect it. And then now we can see our mask is in effect. If I press P as in Paul, now we can see in this larger view, this is looking pretty clean as far as our border. This could be done a little bit better, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'll just keep on going. But I don't like this black background. I kind of want to have a gradient below this. So we'll come back to our edit page by clicking here. And then let's come up to our effects in the top left corner. We'll click on that tab and we want to come to the generator. So we'll click on that and I'd like this four color gradient. So let's click hold and drag that to our timeline. We'll place that at the beginning. Okay. And let's extend this out for the length of our clip. And of course we're just seeing our gradient. The other one is out of view because this track let's pull this down, is sitting on top of our original track. So we want to, here in the track column, let's right click, move this track down, and that's 
looking more like what we want here. But I'm not happy with these colors. That's a bit too busy. Maybe a grayscale gradient would be better for me. So let's select this four color gradient within our timeline. Our inspector is updated and we can see these four colors. And when we click on them, we can choose. Let's choose white for the top left. Okay. For the upper right, we'll also choose white. Okay. Now for our lower left, we're gonna change that to black. Okay, our lower right, black. And of course you can set these colors to be whatever you'd like, but I want this nice looking grayscale gradient with our color VST instrument. I think that, that looks nice. Let's press P as in Paul to view this in a large view. So if we play this back, So everything is looking good. We'll escape out of there. And that is the process for creating a mask to kind of blur out your background and just highlight a specific area of your clip. Now, what if you would like to blur a specific area? For that, let's go ahead and hop back over to the color page. And what I'm gonna do is just reset everything. And we can tell which panels have adjustments that have been made because we have this red circle here. So next to the icon here. So what I'm going to do is come over to the top right corner. We have this circle with an arrow that we can click on to reset everything. And we're back to as we were, we could have also right clicked on our node and reset the node grade. And let's actually undo everything, undo that and bring this back because I want to show some of these settings that we have available with our original mask here. So we have size. While this, just be sure that this is selected, we can turn that on and off by clicking because we use the curve tool. Now we have a size control. So if we click, hold and drag left or right, we can adjust the size of the, that mask. Double clicking on the word size is going to take that back to the default. We can adjust the panning. We'll reset that. We can adjust the tilt. Reset and rotate. And we can adjust the opacity of our VST instrument here. Right now it's at 100%. But if we take that down, then we're going to start to see that background, that gradient that we added. Let's reset that. Then we have a softness control here. And this is basically going to add softness at the border of our mask. So that's on zero by default. But you can see as I increase that, we start to add a bit of softness here and our background application is starting to show up. Okay, and we can adjust the inside of that softness as well as the outside. But we'll go ahead and reset those. And then here we also can invert our mask by clicking on this button here. That's gonna disable. Okay, now let's go ahead and reset everything back. And let's take a look at creating a blur for this section here. And for this, I'm gonna use the linear. Okay, and so let's go ahead and move this over. And we can get rid of this alpha out as well, so we can see more of what's going on. So just coming over here to our node editor, when we hover on this line, this turns blue, we can click once, and we can get rid of that um, alpha output that we had created, or the connection rather. So now let's come back here. Maybe we'll zoom in a bit. Click and hold the mouse wheel to get this set. We can just imagine that this is some sensitive information here that we don't want people to see. So let's press Z as in zebra to zoom out. And then we would come over to our blur panel here and then come to our radius. I'm just gonna hover on the green, click hold and drag this up and you can see that that's been blurred out. P is in Paul, so we can see this in the larger viewer. We'll escape out. Now you can add multiple masks within the color page to the clip that you're working on so you're not stuck with just one. So if we had another sensitive area that we'd like to blur out, we can come over to our power window panel. We'll click once on that and Let's just choose the polygon. So I'll click here 
Let's move this over and we'll blur out this panel here. Let's move these corners in. Okay, so now you can see we have two different masks, two different sections that are being blurred out. Now, if you would have preferred to use another linear tool for this window instead of using the polygon, you can add as many as you'd like here. So by the, these are the default options that we have available, but if you'd like another linear, say this one, just click on linear up at the top, then that's gonna show up at the bottom. It's gonna be active for adjustment. We can see that this is the one that is active because it's a lighter white. These others are a bit more grayed out. So then we can move this wherever we'd like and make its adjustments. Okay, so now we're making use of a second linear tool here within our window. Anytime that you would like to remove, just be sure that it's highlighted. It's gonna be darker gray. You can see this is, turns dark gray when I click once. This is dark gray. And then now we can delete that out. Now, these are the default options that we have and these cannot be removed. So if I click and highlight this and try to delete it, that was removed. So I apparently had an extra one in there, but I'll highlight this one, delete. And we just have a warning that the default windows cannot be deleted. If we come up to our top one, select and try to delete, we have the same warning. But just keep in mind that if you'd like to add more of a particular tool, just use these up top, circle, circle. So now we have two more circles to remove, highlight, delete, highlight, delete. Let's switch back over to our edit page and then we can see we've got our masks going on. P is in Paul for our big viewer. And that is how you can go about adding masks, blur, and the different settings that you have available with those tools. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial.